This week on Couch Tomatoes, we're going back in time with American Horror Story 1984 and giving you our fresh picks on what to watch. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm Naz Perez, and welcome to the new show where we tell you what to watch and why. It's called Couch Tomatoes, brought to you by Freshetta Pizza, my favorite. So today we're talking all things American Horror Story 1984, which is the most anticipated fall show for Rotten Tomato fans. And who better than to talk teenage angst and murder with than Ryan Bergara and Shane Madej from BuzzFeed's Unsolved. You guys are hilarious. I love your show. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks for having us. You're welcome so much. And my personal scream queen, Perry Nemeroff. I'm so happy to be here with you. Who's watched every season of American Horror Story, you guys. So I feel like I'm with the Avengers of Horror. <laughs> that's, a, that's a high compliment. <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyways, guys, so here's the deal. Each episode, we'll cover trending stories in TV. Then we'll do a deep dive into one show that we deem binge-worthy. Today, it's AHS 1984. And then we're going to leave you with our fresh picks, which are basically shows that we think you should just add to your watch list. So let's jump right into our stories. You guys ready? Yeah, let's, let's do, it. do it. Okay. Netflix has officially confirmed Stranger Things 4. So in a teaser released online earlier this week, we learned pretty much nothing except for the tease that says we're not in Hawkins anymore. But I don't know, guys. I feel like the boys still live in Hawkins, right? So we're still going to see some Hawkins. You're definitely still going to see some Hawkins. But as they set up the entirety of season three, they're going to grow beyond it, and they kind of have to. It was a nice homegrown feel at the very beginning. They expanded on it in season two, yeah. and then they cracked the door open for more locations in season three. We're definitely going beyond Hawkins. Yeah, 100%, and I'm excited for that. I think they're going to be time traveling. What? Is that a wild speculation? I, I spent the entirety of season three making references to Back to the Future. I don't think yeah, that's like a happen. DeLorean pops up, also, and then Hopper covered, pops out. They've covered so much pop culture and are trying to kind of reinvent these various tropes. I feel like time travel's next on their list. Yeah, I think you might be guessing for the wrong franchise. I think they're gonna. Do you think? I think they're gonna time travel in Fast and the Furious Nine. <laughs> That's what I think. I don't know about that. Another series that I'm super stoked for, and our next trending news story is Disney has announced that Deborah Chow will be taking the helm for the upcoming Obi Wan Kenobi series for Disney Plus. So Chow previously directed episodes of The Mandalorian, which is scheduled to debut with the streaming series on November 11th. I am not leaving my house when The Mandalorian and all these Star Wars series come out. I've bought some adult diapers. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to be sitting on my couch for weeks, I think. <laughs> All right, I'm never coming to your apartment. <laughs> That's why I don't have friends. It's just caked in poo. It's so gross, man. Uh, I just feel like once Disney Plus comes out, like, do you guys feel like you're ever going to leave your couch? No, yeah. I'm not. I guess not. No, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to his couch. I'll stay, on, I'll stay on my couch. I'm really excited for The Mandalorian, though. Yeah, I'm going to stay home sweet home. Glad I live far away from you guys. Yeah. I'm going to be watching as much Mandalorian as possible because yeah. this is Star Wars we're talking about. This is going to be high-quality TV across the board. I, in tr John Favreau, I, I trust, I and know. in the directors he's already chosen for Mandalorian, I trust. So if they looked at the work that she did in that show, and they want to bring her on to something as epic as an Obi Wan Kenobi series, I mean, how long have we been asking for Obi Wan Kenobi to come back? It's finally happening. Yeah. If they pick her for the job, I have all the faith in the world, and she's the TV resume to prove it. I know she's killing it. I love what she did on the episodes of Mr. Robot. But our last. Story for the day, guys, is we got to look at the new M. Night Shyamalan series, Servant, coming to Apple TV Plus this fall. And the teasers are pretty weird and kind of creepy. With Did you guys see that baby rocking back and forth? Uh, that's some, a, something weird going on with that. That's not a real baby. There's no way that's a real baby. I know. That has to be some type of CGI baby. I hope it's not a real baby. It's a rubber People baby. People get so weird when they show you their baby and you're like, oh, it's so cute. That looks like no baby I've ever laid eyes on. Yeah. <laughs> Was that a real cricket then? <laughs> Cricket's fine. Oh, the okay. baby, that's a rubber baby that got animated with life somewhere along the lines by M. Night. I agree. Super creepy, but so excited for that because he's always so secretive and I know he's going to be at New York Comic Con this week, so I can't wait to find out more about oh, this I series. I hope there's more there. Television. Yeah. So guys, before we deep dive into American Horror Story 1984, I want to take a quick break and talk about why people are so obsessed with anthologies and how they're oddly very similar to pizza. Check it out. Okay, so since we're talking about one of my favorite anthologies, I started to think about why we love anthologies so much. And I came to the conclusion that it's because they're always mixing things up with a new director, a new actor, or a new storyline. They're always taking something that's really familiar to us and keeping it fresh. And I feel like the same can be said when it comes to picking a meal while you're chilling at home watching your favorite shows, which is why I love Freshetta Pizza. With their premium toppings, their scratch-made sauce, and 100% real cheese, they're taking something really familiar and keeping it fresh. So my point is, just like the shows you watch at home, keep your meals interesting too with Freshetta Pizza. 
Okay, guys, so if your lights are off, it's probably a good time to turn them on right now because we're going to talk about American Horror Story 1984. I'm really trying to channel my inner Ryan and Shane here. I feel like that's something you guys would say. <laughs> so the Ryan Murphy created anthology series is back for its ninth season, this time taking inspiration from the classic slasher genre. And in typical AHS fashion, we have some returning faces in new places. We got Emma Roberts, Billy Lord, Leslie Grossman, and John Carroll Lynch, my fave, returning to the franchise along with some serious newcomers. We got Gus Kenworthy and Glee alum Matthew Morrison. Now at the time of this recording, just so you guys know, we've only seen two episodes so far, but I feel like there's so much to unpack already. What are your initial thoughts? They really get right into it this season. I mean, <laughs> 10 <laughs> minutes into the first episode, they're like, hey, let's go to this crazy camp. That's, we're really speeding along. I know the guy's like, I'm going. Do you guys want to come? And they're like, Yeah. Like no commitment <laughs> whatsoever. I guess you really think about that. <laughs> like nobody has to tell any friends or family. No. We're just like, bye for the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yes, there's a lot to unpack because we're really speeding through the plot here. And if they're speeding through that early of a plot point, and they're going to, if they're getting to the camp that fast, that means that it's really going to go off the rails. It must. Later. It's right? American Horror Story. Yeah. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what we all hope, right, Perry? What do you think? I, I've watched enough seasons of American horror story to know that whatever I think at this point in time, whatever my expectations are, are going to be completely wrong. Because if I can come up with it right now, Ryan Murphy has something way more sneaky up his sleeve. Right. I feel like around episode five, it's going to go off the rails. But I personally love it. I love the 80s nostalgia. I love Matthew Morrison's character. All my friends that are fans of Glee think it's somewhat traumatizing to see him as this character after seeing yeah. him play Will Schuster, which I think is so funny. But for me, the show is more fun and funny and not scary. Like Mr. Jingles... Is Mr. Jingles a little really bumbling. scary? What Sounds do you guys like say? a cat name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Should be Mr. Jingles the cat. I, I mean, I kind of come to expect this from the show. I long for the days of American Horror Story Murder House when it oh. really is oh. like oh, so super good. scary and unsettling. And admittedly, the show has lost a lot of that along the way. But the fact that he's developed a show where he can swing for the fences yeah. so wildly and be able to do whatever he wants, I kind of applaud Ryan Murphy and the whole team behind the show for that. So the fact that this is so colorful and crazy and and it's like a mashup of a horror comedy. I kind of want to run with it. I mean, the 80s like horror genre is pretty silly and campy when you look back on it. I laughed really hard at all those Jason movies when I was growing up. Yeah. Maybe I'm just a sadistic psychopath. I mean, the first Friday the 13th does have some, I mean, there is a um, sort of an amateur look to it that is really unsettling. That is true. Which they ape a few times in this first pilot. Right out of the gate, American Horror Story 1984, with two episodes, has a 94% on the tomato meter. The yeah. closest after that is Asylum with an 84%, and it was the highest rated season premiere since Freak Show. How does it compare to you? It's so hard to say because I've just invested so much time of my life <laughs> in American Horror. It's like, that's a big investment. Thinking, That's like longer than the Kardashians. Thinking theory. back to Freak Show in particular, anybody who has watched the entirety of that season knows you get invested for 90% of the show just for it not to matter for the last 10. So I'm mm. always just a little cautious when it comes to jumping feet first into a season of American Horror Story. But if I just look at these two episodes, solid start. I am hooked. Solid start, but I agree with you. It is an emotional journey and it's a commitment. But I want to know from you guys, do you think that we're missing anything by not having the American Horror Story staples like Jessica Lange, Kathy Bates, Sarah Paulson? Because you were talking about message boards and I feel like when I read the message boards, a lot of people are kind of bummed that they're not in this season. So do you guys think we're losing anything? Do we think they're going to pop up in another episode this season? My money's on Sarah Paulson. I think during an interview, she already admitted she might pop up at a point and... Mm. I mean, she, I think she's attached to this franchise for as long as it lasts. And when it comes to, like, Kathy Bates and Angela Bassett and Jessica Lange, we're talking about icons yeah. in the genre and in filmmaking and TV shows across the board. Whenever their absence is felt, it's going to hurt a little. Yeah. I, I think they will pop up maybe just even for a little bit. I would love for Kathy Bates to pop up. Just because it kind of seems like... Well, who wouldn't? Well, I mean, like, <laughs> it seems like they're they're setting up this, like, uh, Freddy vs. Jason scenario when it comes to Mr. Jingles versus Richard Ramirez. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, in a weird, like, if I could just take a villain from another movie, I would love for Kathy Bates from Misery <laughs> to come into this movie. Oh, wow. I'll never have, say no to any Wilkes. And having a head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head inside this camp, and who, who really cares about the campers? Just let those three go at it. <laughs> uh, I think they'll pop up. Sarah Paulson, I think, will pop up. Yeah. I wonder if part of it, though, is 
obviously Ryan Murphy loves making this show, maybe wants to continue to do it for several more years. Mm -hmm. Like, letting some of the other cast members kind of... Have their day in the sun. Yeah, because like yeah. Billy Lord is really... Oh, she's so funny. She's so Montana. good. Yeah, and um, I think Emma Roberts has so much Scream Queen cred. I mean, she yeah. was Sidney Prescott's cousin. She was a killer in Scream 4. Love Scream like, 4. I think she could literally just take this, and we... I personally feel like we're not going to see any of the staples in this season. Her performance in Scream 4 just shows <laughs> the immense range that she has. So good, and it's actually so something good. we can see in American Horror Story, because yeah. we've seen her play, you know, the straight woman, so to speak, but all also like a crazy character who's super over the top and sometimes, you know, conniving and mean. Yeah, I feel like we're used to seeing her being conniving and mean and I actually like her character in 1984. I like that she's playing kind of like the opposite of what we're used to seeing her play. You think for now. I, I was about to say. Wait until they turn it on its head. She yeah, is kind true. of a harbinger of doom in this series. Everywhere she goes, people, the body count rises. Well, it's like <laughs> that one line that Billy Lord says to her where it's it's something to the effect of, it, like, if all you see is the bad, all you're going to wake up. Is all you see the shadows, is, that's yes, all you're yes, going to see. Yes, like yeah. she, yes. Like, she basically embodies that. To be fair, she did see her uh, future husband get his head blown off. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. About and her and dad saw that. Oh, God. We, like, we don't even necessarily know if any of that is 100% true. At this that is point, true. I do think she That's really true. went through all of that, but you never know. I love that scene. By that way. was a lot. S such that a was good a, scene. You it's thought the it was Red a lot? Wedding I mean, version it, it of was, the American Horror Story. It was, yeah. okay. it was the, the Ryan Murphy so Red good. Wedding. It was certainly yeah. effective. Okay, well, one thing we do know. <laughs> it, was certainly, <laughs> it was certainly effective. His brains were everywhere. He's like, yeah, that worked for me. I'm not getting married. So one thing we do know is obviously that the 80s are heavily influencing this show, right? We talked about Friday the 13th. We're also getting Michael Myers-y vibes, but also there's true crime from L.A. in this. I want to know from you guys, do you think we're going to see any more real-life serial killers in this show? I will say I hope not. And, and this may be not to sound like a like a, a wet blanket here, but I just I, I don't like when people take real life serial killers and be like they're part of the MCU now. <laughs> and like you know, <laughs> like this like, Richard Ramirez yeah, gonna join the yeah. Avengers. Oh, is the Zodiac gonna come in here too? Like they're real life, like they're characters when they're like awful people. <laughs> so, Richard Ramirez is a monster. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Human monster. But he's not that scary to me in 1984. But yeah, I think That's about that too because Xavier, uh, the character in 1984, mentions Son of Sam. Yeah, episode. that's true. Yeah, and I'm like, I just watched Mindhunter. You know, he was they, great in that. Do they get money or royalties? Do these? I, I sure hope, hope, they not. hope not. No, <laughs> I they like, couldn't. <laughs> no, they're not like Richard Ramirez is dead, right? As far as is we know, yes. Right? Unless yeah, he's, well, he's a he's a I ghost. Think he now. died in 2013. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's good for us. Then. That's good for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, in a world where maybe there would be other real life serial killers, do you guys have one that you maybe Shane? I mean, here's want to see. Ideally, you would want someone who you don't want to like, like glorify them, and if you can take a little liberties with them, then obviously Zodiac, because yeah. Ryan Murphy can be like, well, you know, dream up some little story about Zodiac, because nobody knows who he is. That, sure, that, bring him into the picture. That is true. Right. Are there other shows out there that you think our friends at home should watch if they're loving 1984 right now? I mean, all I can think of is the terror in the sense that each season is kind of its own story. Right. Um, it's not quite as fun and lighthearted, mm -hmm. yeah. but uh, it's it's um, a different take each season on a on sort of a thematically similar horror story mm -hmm. rooted in history. It's kind of hard to think of a high quality serialized, serialized piece of content that is as campy as this in the horror right, genre. Yes. Maybe Dark. Dark is also set in the 80s, kind of, for the majority of the first season. It's a German horror show, but I enjoy that. I think it's very fun. It's like a German Stranger Things. It's like a German... <laughs> it's only like Stranger Things in the sense that a kid goes missing and that's about it. But there's like an element of like a town ecosystem. That is and true. some kind of overarching mystery. Santa Clarita Diet. Oh. If someone has not watched that show, that show is yeah. hands down one of the best things Netflix has ever made. Drew Barrymore and Tim Oliphant are so good. I like Tim. Phenomenal Tim's in it. Tim's but that's great. like a perfect blend <laughs> of horror comedy and just the extremes they go to with the gore, but how charming that family is. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know, that's just like the perfect marrying of blood and gore, but also really charming content. I agree. I have to you check that it. out. I love that one. Also, have you guys heard of Two Sentence Horror Stories on Netflix? No. No. I have heard of that. It aired on the CW in August, and now it's on Netflix, but it's also horror anthology, 30-minute episodes. I love it. It's on my list. Yeah, and because they really take everything we love about horror, but put a modern twist on it. You guys would love it. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, let's talk theories now. Finally. 
Oh, no. Who do we think the last camper is going to be? What do we think is going to happen? Perry, I feel like you have a lot of theories. You're I, have, I have so many theories, and with every single theory that I like, I can always find one or two points that make it not possible. But the main thing that I latched on to right from the start was the idea that it is basically a movie being made within the series. I mean, just look at the opening credits. It all takes place kind of on a TV screen. And mm -hmm. even at the end of those credits, when the, the tapes are being shown yeah. and one kind of, the, oh, the tape yeah. fizzles out of it. I don't know. So many things point at that. And then the very first time the hiker says to someone, you're not supposed to be here. It made me think that, you know, someone popped up in a scene when they weren't. Yeah, he says, I'm not supposed to die here. Yeah. To Richard yeah. Ramirez. And I was like, is this a game? Like maybe Richard Ramirez walks into the filming of a horror movie and he's caught off guard. Oh. That's interesting because when he said, I'm not supposed to be here, I just figured it was a ghost going through a residual haunting, like living the same day over and over and well, over Well, to be again. fair, the hiker is one of the things that does not entirely work in the TV idea because I do think the hiker is a ghost and that's where I get to the Hellmouth theory. <laughs> The, oh, what is this hell? hell? What is the hell? Yeah, so, it, so they exist. I think they exist <laughs> in talking about them mur like murder, ha murder house, Hotel Cortez, and maybe here too, where when people die in a particular location, they're dead, but they're never gone. Mm. So if the hiker is stuck there, and who knows, maybe Leslie Grossman is stuck there. Maybe she really died at the very beginning, and she's another individual like him, mm -hmm. and she's yeah. just stuck there. Ryan, Jonas. Shane, what are your theories? That that movie theory is really good. I do think that. Emma is going to be the villain at the end of the end of the show. But then, isn't that so obvious? I feel like Ryan wouldn't do that. It right? could be the double that's bluff. That's such a horror movie trope, and he always turns them on their heads. As a woman, I'm curious to see if she is going to be like the final girl or not. Yeah, I mean, I think it's also it's easy to see a scenario where she could be the final girl. But I didn't really think about that. I did take her on her word that the wedding happened the way it did, and that. I guess everything that's happened, she's been the only one that's been present, so she could just be lying. I don't know, maybe it is easy to th think that she could be the real villain of the of the series, but maybe that's not as big and crazy of a theory, but I do think that's where it's gonna end. I think Chef Birdie, she's sketchy to me. Where Why is wasn't she? she? Where is she? Why wasn't she in what the second she doing? episode? Oh, yeah. Birdie? Yeah, okay, what's your theory? Um, they planted this seed. I don't know how deliberate it is, if it's just a red herring, but is it Xavier who at the very yeah. beginning said he was cast in a role as a killer and then he very deliberately Ooh. says that he's a method actor and went and studied Stella Adler. And, and then the guy he knows does get the stake through the, his, the back of his head. And he invites everyone to the camp. Right. So this is his way of kind of method acting? It Why, could be. Right? There's also time travel. So you just reminded me of something else. There's the time <laughs> travel idea too, because at the beginning, Xavier says he rear-ended um, Billy Lord's character, and that's what happens at the end of Apocalypse. So there's another theory going around out there oh. that maybe they have time traveled in order to stop stop the creation of Mallory, Billy Lord's character in Apocalypse, because Cody Fern in Apocalypse is told that in order to, you know, enact his plan, there can't be any witches. So he would have to go back in time and kill her. The greatest multi I don't know. That is the great, Perry, you need to write that down and take credit for that. Thank God we're recording this. If that happens, I will die. To be fair, there's a lot of reports out there, a lot of people on YouTube and on message boards theorizing about all this stuff. Okay. So I can't claim credit to all of it. I'm imagining Has you... Murphy ever linked seasons like that, yeah. though? Yeah. yeah. Oh, a lot yeah, of them. A lot of them. So my theory is that the aliens from <laughs> Asylum, it's the 80s, right? There's got to be aliens, guys. I mean, E.T., aliens, Predator. <laughs> like, there's got to be got to be aliens in this season. They're going to come, and they have the power to resurrect people. So I think they resurrected the camp counselor from 1970, mm. and the aliens are going to come and just destroy all. And maybe we'll see the witches again, because I think I remember seeing an interview <laughs> where Ryan said the witches would be back, and he's doing 10 seasons. So I want season 10 to be witches versus aliens. I mean, I the fact versus anything. <laughs> yeah. The fact that all of this is on the Cummins table is a true testament to how fun the show is. Right. The <laughs> fact that we're like, could be aliens, could be time travel, could be, you know. Agreed. Time will tell. Also, yeah. I want Margaret and Night Strangler to hook up because I feel like there was also some some sexual tension there. There's some so doubt. Bad, okay. <laughs> it seems like anything's on the table. This is like the end of Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. theories are so good. We could go on and on, obviously. But before we wrap up, guys, I need to ask you, who do you think this show is for and are you going to stick with it? Well, I think you already know I'm going to stick with it. But for anybody who likes American Horror Story out there, the seasons connect. So this is for an American Horror Story fan. If you want to keep up with it, it's a must watch.
I also think if you're just a fan of 80s horror, and yeah, if you're a fan of 80s horror, you should stick with the show. I'm certainly going to stick with it. I love it. I'm sticking with it. I think it's good for AHS fans, but also if you're not a fan, I think it's accessible enough that if this is the tip of the iceberg and there's going to be some crazy twist that connects to other seasons, it's a great jumping off point. I agree with you guys. I feel like this is a season where new people can kind of hop on and join the bandwagon. Okay, so before we go, I want you guys to tell me what your fresh picks are. So these are shows that you think everyone should just watch, doesn't have to do with horror. Shows that people should add to their watch list. What are you guys watching? I'm sticking in the horror genre and I'm going to highly recommend Channel Zero on Shudder right now. You can actually stream all four seasons. It's another anthology series and they're mm -hmm. all based on creepy pasta stories. Highly, that. highly inventive, very well done. Yet another show. Actually, now I'm three for three with this type of thing where you get one season of a show, they set the bar there, never fall below it. Every season of that show is phenomenal. Wow. Oh, wow. Also, you sold me on that, Perry. A tooth man. <laughs> Tooth Man's great. If you don't like people covered in teeth, uh, don't watch it. Tooth Man, <laughs> yeah, Pretzel Jack. I don't, yeah, Teeth I don't. is like one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, I'm not going to stick in the horror genre. I'm going to talk about Terrace House. <laughs> that is not scary at all. It is not scary at all. It's actually the most hypnotic and uh, beautiful and delightful, one of the most beautiful and delightful shows I've ever watched. It's a Japanese reality show. <laughs> it's a Japanese reality show where they take, uh, I think, six or seven strangers, put them in a house, and they're all just wonderful to each other. Uh, it's not pre-produced. There's no drama. One of the big arcs of the season is who ate another piece, uh, person's uh, steak in the house. Wait, this is so funny. It's incredibly like, There, there was a piece of steak in the fridge, and someone stole it, and that's like the big point of drama. It's like one of the big arcs of the season. And then every now and then they'll cut back to a panel of comedians that will comment. They're basically um, like a proxy for the audience. It's just a... Just a delightful. It is like that ASMR. It is just soothing. It's hypnotic, <laughs> like a uh, Great British Baking Show is hypnotic. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I've been obsessed with the Dark Crystal: Age of Resistance. It's a prequel to the movie, which I kind of like, but um, the series is uh, sweeping. It's like a Lord of the Rings style epic. There's a lot of puppets. The cast is crazy. Uh, I rarely binge shows nowadays, but this is one that I watched in eh, two or three days. So. Dark Crystal, it's amazing. I can't talk it up enough. Uh, what about you, Nance? What are you watching? I'm watching um, The Politician. I actually finished it, Ryan Murphy's other show that aired last week on Netflix. And I feel like the void of Jessica Lange in 1984 is really filled for me in The Politician. But it's about this overachiever, perfectionist kid that's running for student body president in hopes that it'll help him become president of the United States one day. And I'm like a perfectionist, so I totally relate. And there's already a cliffhanger for season two, so I think you guys should watch it. But anyways, guys, that's our show. Thank you so much. Perry, Ryan, Shane. Thank it went you. by so quick. I love you guys. Thanks for joining me. And if you guys want more on American Horror Story 1984, head on over to RottenTomatoes.com. Also, comment below. Tell us all your theories. I want to read all your comments, how you think this is going to end. Remember, we're all in this together. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future episodes. It's free. And next episode, we're talking Batwoman. I'm Naz Prez, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.